Hey folks, it's Gail from Seattle Coffee Gear and we are at the Specialty Coffee Expo which is being hosted in Seattle, Washington this year. By the way, next year it's going to be in Boston, so we will see you there. But in any case, uh, today as well, I'm visiting with Phil McKnight from Breville and we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, barista touch and what its functions are, what makes it so good. I always like getting together with Phil at the show, right? Or not at the show, wherever. Wherever, yeah. exactly. Good to see yeah. you, Phil. Good to see you yeah. too, Gail. So yeah. tell me about the machine. Let's go over a little bit of the details about what makes it better than other espresso machines, mm -hmm. even better than the other ones that you have. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Let's, let's... What makes it uniquely different. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about it. So first up, you can see uh, it's got a touchscreen interface. Love it. So That's it like the Oracle. Follow, follows up from the Oracle Touch. Mm -hmm. So the Oracle Touch was the first product we did with a touchscreen. Mm -hmm. Super challenging project. Like we already had a great espresso machine that, you know, solved the auto Oracle. grinding, dosing and tamping, yep. yeah, yep. and and auto milk. Yep. Um, when we added a touchscreen, it was a whole nother layer of complexity that um, oh, for sure. that we had to understand, and and so did our factory. So yeah, yeah. So why doesn't it say Gale? Why doesn't oh, we'll put Gale on there. We'll customize a drink for you, <laughs> and we'll put, and we'll put Gale on the screen. <laughs> I was just asking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this, um, it showcases all the drinks that you can make. So the, the nice thing about it for, uh, for the home consumer is it's like they've always got that question, how do I make a latte? How do exactly. I make a cappuccino? How do I make a flat white? Well, now you just, you just touch on flat white right there. And then this is the recipe. You can so, use you can use the the factory default settings, yeah. or you can change yeah. it to make it whatever you, can, you want for yourself. Or you can customize yeah, exactly. exactly. So it's a very simple left to right process. So we grind mm -hmm. first, then we extract, and, and then the we milk. texture milk. Yep. So and so you can change simple. the temperature of the milk. Yep. How much foam there is. Mm -hmm. uh, how much uh, brewing happens. It's ounces and the grind size. All of those things. All of those things. That's exactly. great. Exactly. Love it. So I know that. From past experience with you, you like a slightly longer extraction, uh -huh. and I know that your milk temperature you like it around 140. Let's yeah. have a look at the texture. Yeah, um, I like it. I, let's take it up a little bit. A I, little bit. My palate has changed this last year. Let's take it up to the 150. 150. And, oh, okay. and I do like more foam. Okay. 150. There you go. So you can see we've got the little uh, cup symbol with the plus uh -huh. in it. So if we touch that. Then we can save it, save these custom settings because we changed what the default was. Mm -hmm. So now all we need to do is touch the tick, and then you can choose your coffee icon to represent your beverage. Go ahead and choose one. So this looks a lot like my latte art. Oh right, but okay. I That's understand that you today. But I understand that we might be moving to something more like this. Okay, and okay. then you can just type in your name. And just and touch the, the tick. Save. There we have There we it. go. There's my drink. So we're going to make Gail's custom uh, flat white today. There you go. How's that? That sounds good. So talk a little so bit about a, some yes. of the innards. I yeah, mean, so they've changed that we've as been well. On the Brister Express, the, the heat system that we've been using is a traditional thermocoil. So mm -hmm. this is one cut in half. So you can see the stainless steel lined water path wrapped around this uh, embedded element cast into this uh, block of aluminum, yep. as you guys would say, yep. aluminium for the rest <laughs> aluminium for the rest of the world. <laughs> the rest of the world. <laughs> okay. And then so uh, so water flows in here and uh, and then hot water comes out of here at the right temperature. Right. So PID temperature controlled. Uh, but it does have some a, a few issues. It's not very thermally responsive because mm -hmm. you've got a large block of aluminum. Sure and it takes what about Seven, eight minutes? How many no, this minutes? No, one's, this one's only about two. Okay, two minutes. Two minutes. To warm up. The, the dual boiler's about seven minutes. Yep. The Oracle's about seven. Yep. So we've used a brand new heat system um, in our Barista Touch. So oh. this is our Thermojet heating system. So you can see extremely thin, very small thermal mass. So it's very responsive to changes uh, in energy yep. uh, and the temperature that um, we require out of the out of the system. So. Three minute or three second warm up time. Yeah, just three seconds. Well, so. when I first saw this machine, and I tried it uh, at our Breville location, or Breville, Bellevue location, and it, and I put it on, I turned around, I turned back around, and it was ready to go, and I'm like, something's wrong. Yeah. 
And then, of course, I got into it and figured out that, I mean, we talked about it, not with you, but with some other people, and three seconds, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And it was ready. Yeah, exactly. So the other thing is, um, when we change from espresso to steam to texture milk, it's instantaneous. Mm -hmm. So there's not, you don't have to wait that 30 seconds for this to come up to about 160 degrees. It's ready instantly. And then when we go from steam back to espresso, it cools cools down down extremely quickly. You don't have to purge a large amount of water into your drip tray to get it back to 96 degrees. Uh, It goes back with just one ounce of water through the system. It brings it back to 96. Nice, that's huge. People want everything fast. Exactly, exactly. This is it, and convenient. Yeah. Without those super automatic, mm-hmm. the limitations, limitations, shall we, shall we yeah, say, yeah, and the coffee is going to be so much better with a pour to filter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. all of the above. Yeah, fresh ground. It's got a, it's got the grinder built in, stainless steel casing. You know, it's nice. All of it. And then the other thing we have, uh, oh, exactly, is or, uh, no, go ahead. No, no, the other thing we have, which is really nice, is we've got a, uh, a new water filtration system in this machine. Oh, really? You, if you change the filter every three months, no need to descale. Nice. So People if, you live in a, if you live in a hard water area and you're yes. not filtering water, this will do it for you. So Perfect. Because people don't want to descale. We Hearts, tell them to, but they don't want to. They don't want to. It's a hassle, inconvenience. So, so things go wrong when they don't descale. So exactly. we put the water filter in there. So we take those problems. We take away. care of people. Exactly. Yeah. And then uh, it has the steam system that is similar to the Oracle. Very similar to the Oracle. So it's uh, it'll automatically texture milk uh, to barista standards. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a temperature sensor in the drip tray here. The Oracle's got one. In the, in, tip the of the, in the tip of the wand. Yep. This one's embedded uh, in the drip tray. So when you put your milk up here, it mm-hmm. senses the temperature at the bottom of the, the uh, frothing pitcher. Exactly, yeah. So you can set, customize the temperature mm-hmm. uh, just the way you like it, and then it will shut off automatically when it reaches that temperature. Mm-hmm. So there's no more holding onto the jug, feeling the side yeah. of it, or sticking a thermometer in it. The machine takes care of that for you. And it comes with the frothing pitcher too. It does indeed. Just, just saying. Yeah. So uh, we might go ahead and um, we'll brew one on your setting. Okay. I'll pour one, and then we'll get you to do exactly the is same. Is that what do you too think much? It? It, that's great. Is it going to be too much foam for the latte art? The way I have it set? No, you'll be you'll be fine. I'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah. Sweating a little. <laughs> so let's uh, let's go with Gail. Yeah. So you can see up here we've got um, our grind time. So this. Uh, this sets the amount of time that the grind is going to run for. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's very easy to adjust up or down in seconds. So mm-hmm. 17 seconds is about um, where, we, where we like it. And then um, you can see uh, when it flips back to the screen, you can see this is our grind setting at the moment. So mm-hmm. we're on 14. So there's, uh, there's 30 settings. So we're on 14. And then we can just touch the start. Yep. I like to wiggle it a bit to get the grinds to settle. Yeah, otherwise you end up with a mound in the middle and, exactly. and not evenly distributed. Exactly, so then when we're like this, I like to just collapse a little bit. So just a gentle tap down. Yep. Then we use our, our tamper. Yep, built into the machine and lots yep. of people look at that and they think you're going to go up like this. No, the tamper comes out and you use it in a traditional in fashion. In a traditional manner, exactly. Oh yeah, so much nicer. Ni- nice place to store it. Yep. And then we use our razor dose trimming tool. So this precisely controls mm-hmm. the dose yep. uh, in the porter filter. So just quickly, just a little, one little swirl, just to take off our excess. Yep. And, and then what that, as you can see, it it will only go down so far. Yeah. So, so it's it going to be the same every time. Sets the head height and yep. also sets the amount of coffee as yep. well. And if you've tamped incorrectly, like you've tamped on a bit on the side, it'll straighten it up. It'll level it up for That's you as well. Perfect for me. All my old videos, people talk about the tamping. All we need now is a cup. Yeah. Here's one I prepared earlier. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to brew Gail's 28 second shot. Mm-hmm. So now we're in low pressure pre-infusion mode. So we're, right. we're actually only delivering about around about two bar of pressure uh, before full pump pressure. Then it kicks in and does the full brew up to the time that we have it set for an accounting you can see it counting for you too. So you know where sh- it's at. That's our shot clock. Yep, shot clock. The shot clock, exactly. Mm. 
Gail's 28 second extraction. Now we're just going to put some, uh, some cold milk in our pitcher. And Phil's going to do some art, and then he's going to show, what he's, he's going to show me how to do it, and then I'm supposed to do it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Pop our espresso shot up there. We just, all we do is just uh, insert the steam wand into our milk. Yep. Jug sits on the temperature sensor, and then we just... Look at that shot. Nice. So we're injecting air directly into the steam line, so that's how we're creating the texture. So normally what would happen is um, the barista has to manage the tip of the right. steam wand at the surface of the milk. This is pumping um, air in. Exactly. Yeah. So, but it's doing it in a not a traditional manner. We inject it through a um, what's called a venturi valve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as steam's rushing past the valve, air is being drawn into um, mm -hmm. the steam line. Mm -hmm. And we also assist that a little bit with a pump, and that gives us our variability. So we can go, we've got eight texture settings. Yeah. So, so the uh, variation of the pump will allow us to, uh, to change the texture. I've used yeah. it, it's great. And it produces, um, you know, silky, like really fine microphone, yep. as good as a, a professional barista would be able to produce on a, on a commercial machine. 150, shuts itself off, it's done. So as soon as it's done there, dings tells you it's ready, a little tick comes up. We'll just um, get our damp cloth here. Yep. Now, even though we're giving it a wipe with a damp cloth, um, it's a cool touch wand. Yep. So, and so the, hot, the tip will be a little hot, feel. but the rest of it is it's yeah, pretty it's cool. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. And then it purges itself. Auto purge. There you Automatically go. cleans itself. Yeah. It's so okay. we just give that a little tap down bit of a swirl so you can see like Very really nice. beautiful yeah. and silky yeah that's silky. glassy white paint wet paint white chrome now let's see if we can um, so we want to start up high and just drop that through the crema yeah and then we're going to come down low at the end and then we're just going to push through and there's your heart and there's the heart very nice Phil. so we're going to get <laughs> you to do that that's like so simple like you'll be able to this, you'll nail it. He's saying so simple. You're, yeah. Well, you're you're a good coach. Let's try it. Let's let's, let's do see it. what happens. Let's do it. All right. Okay. Let's swap sides here. Yeah. Look at oh, that. Oh, look at that. We're ready to pour a heart. Look at that. All right. All right. Here we go. Start high. Okay. Swirl your espresso a little bit. Okay. Do you just want to break the surface tension of the espresso? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Yep. And pour right in, right, watch, watch it. <laughs> right in the middle of that. And up high. Yep, there you go, up high, yep. Just move it around a little bit, yep, that's it. Yep, now bring the tip down close, really close. Yeah, there you go, there you go, there, and push through. Look at that, and I almost overflowed <laughs> it. Look at, that. Look at that, not bad. Where was yours? Bring uh, that over here. Mine's over here. Oh, your heart is definitely better. No, I think better. yours is nice. It's got more detail, yours. Well, well, it's got a tail. I mean, the tail with a couple of droplets. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you, Phil. Congratulations. Now I can do a heart. Do I have to buy in the machine to do it? Probably, huh? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking, yeah. I need a... Do you know where you can get one? Uh, I think I do, yeah. <laughs> Seattle I think Coffee Gear? Maybe Seattle Coffee Gear, yeah. <laughs> or maybe I'll come down and see uh, you in Australia. That'd be good. I would love You're to welcome come. anytime. Thank yeah. you so much. And thanks for going through the um, the Barista Touch with us. And Always spend a, a little bit of time. Always and a pleasure. The show's about to open for the morning, so yeah. we timed that just about right. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Phil. Cheers. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Gail. Cheers.